Hello and welcome to another Spruce and Brews unboxing. Today we're looking at the Solar Exilia Battle Group for Warhammer the Horus Heresy. So yeah, first of all I want to say a massive thanks to Games Workshop for sending us a free review copy over of this. This is the first release for the Solar Exilia uh, in plastic for Warhammer the Horus Heresy. So if you're not a Heresy player, the Solar Exilia are essentially the, the, the army. They're the equivalent of the Astra Militarum in um, Horus Heresy. And up until now, they've been a very expensive range to collect. Um, they were Forge World only. Um, off the top of my head, like 20 just normal dudes that we see in this box were like £70 in resin. And if I remember rightly, the entire range was just a bit of a, a sculpting project for one of the Forge World sculptors. Um, they were ridiculously popular. And it's been one of the big hopes of a lot of Heresy players that we would get Solar Exilia in plastic. I've wanted to do a Solar Exilia army for a long time, but obviously due to the cost of them, it is hellishly expensive to put together a, a full force of them in resin. So with the release of this box and some of the kits as well that are coming in plastic, we can finally do the Solar Exilia army of your dreams in plastic and don't forget you can do forces like this as an allied detachment as well so I think this box is going to be really popular in that you could just do a small force as a bit of a palette cleanser and add it to your existing Horus Heresy army or obviously go all in and, and do a full force. At the time of filming this I don't know if this is a limit, limited release the Astartes battle group was um, so I suspect this probably will be too and then um, soon after it the individual kits will be set up but I'll put a note on screen if it is a permanent release because obviously that'd be awesome if it is uh, so we're going to assume not but yeah fingers crossed from a price point this is £130 so remember I said 20 guys were £70 for the resin ones yeah this is going to be a lot cheaper than putting them together in resin so let's have a quick look at the back of the box and see what we get in here so we get a five man um, command group now that is a um, line command section that is one of the two um, HQ choices that the Solar Orcs have there is another HQ option I don't think this kit can build though so I suspect that's either going to remain in resin or be a separate kit that comes out at some time we get 20 models enough to build one um, rifle section of 20 men or two of 10 that's really cool too because these are kind of like the building blocks of your um, your army a lot of the solar auxilia kind of unit options come in tertios so essentially for one troops choice you could have three lots of 20 guys so as you can imagine you get a lot of stuff in there like tanks as well lehman russes you could take three of them as a single hq choice the the cheap in points so you can flood the board with lots of troops so you've got some options here of whether you do two smaller squads of 10 or one big squad of 20. I'm probably going to lean towards 20 man squads. Um, if only for the fact we've got the Draconian transport which can carry 20 troops. I think this box or multiples of this box would be a really nice way of doing a mechanised force. Obviously you've got a transport that these guys can sit into. You've got a Lehman Russ as well. Um, it's a Mars Alpha pattern so if you've picked up any of the old um, Vrax uh, uh, Lehman Russes, so the um, Death Corps Krieg or the Tracer one that we did a while ago is the same kind of model. If you've seen our um, Imperialis video, again a lot of this is very familiar. So yeah, Lehman Russ, I think you get two weapon options on this one and then when the kit comes out separately there'll be a separate box that has some other weapon options on here. I believe the Draconian has all of the um, the weapon options on it and then we get a new model as well again another one that we saw in legions imperialis and that is the Athon heavy sentinel that's a bit of a, a gun platform and walker and it looks really really cool um, we did see a little tease in the new year video of what looks like a light sentinel as well so it looks like again you might be able to lean into that kind of like mechanized army thing um, one thing that people have asked before we jump into the rest of the video, where the rules of this are going to be, they are in the instruction manual. I suspect we'll probably see a supplement for uh, Solar Auxiliary at some point in the near future. But um, yeah, at the time of filming, for sure, the instructions are in the manual. So we'll see those in a little bit as we go through the video. 
So what we're going to do is check out the contents, have a look at the assembly instructions, see what options we've got, have a look at the rules for the Heavy Sentinel, and then in the second half of the video, we'll hopefully have these built and painted in a Chthonian Headhunter's colour scheme, so we can see what they look like in the flesh. So let's uh, crack this open and have a look what is inside. So straight off the bat, big old box full of sprues. We'll take the instructions to one side for now, because we'll see those properly in a bit. Um, well, that's interesting. Okay, let's move these out of the way and we'll have a look what we've got. So we've got a little sprue here, which looks to be a sprue of weapons, maybe, for the, uh, the Sentinel. And these might even plug into the tanks as well. So that's interesting that they've got them on their own frame. For the Space Marine vehicles, um, a lot of the sprues they've, they've done quite cleverly so they can reuse it across the range. So interesting that they've got this sprue with like multi-lasers and las cannons and stuff. Um, I think they probably plug, plug into the front of the tanks as your kind of like secondary weapons. That's interesting. Over here we have got the Sentinel. I believe that's the full kit there. And again, we've got a lot of weapon options here. I wonder if we'll be able to make this quite modular so you can just plug in different weapons. That'd be really, really cool if you could because um, they've managed to do that in a lot of the heresy kits where you can, you know, maybe with limited magnet use or even just putting pins in, you can make it quite swappable. But that's a really, really nice looking tank, uh, walker. And it looks like we've got some different weapon options for the sides as well. I think it can take hunter killer missiles instead of the rocket pods on the side. So again, we'll have a look at the rules proper when we get to that part of the manual. Majority of the kit is the, um, the troops. So we've got a lot of frames here. So one, two, three, four, five frames for the troops. So that's interesting. Do we get four per frame? We get five per frame. So that suggests we get four frames that can be built stock as your standard solar auxilia. And then it looks like that the command sprue in a second when we look to it is actually an upgrade frame for these and I wonder if some of the other solar auxilia infantry kits are going to follow suit with that as well so get this stock frame and then basically upgrade it with different kits that'd be a really nice way of doing it we've got honestly we've got power fist in there all sorts of stuff yeah these look really really cool I'm looking forward to um, to building and painting these up. Like I said, I'm going to do them as Chthonian Headhunters because I've got a big kind of traitor force. And I've done the Chthonian Headhunters for Legion Imperialis. It'd be nice to have like some synergy across them. So yeah, so it just looks like you get four frames of them to build as the standard infantry kit. And then you get another five plus a command sprue in order to build them as the, uh, the HQ choice. So that's a really cool way of doing it. Again, you get loads of bits in there as well. So you may well have some spare bits that you can use um, across the rest of the army with some optional like bodies and stuff in there as well to change up the look of them. So that's a really nice way of doing it. That's, that's cool, I approve. So that can go there. We then have all the tanks, I believe. So it looks like that is the turret sprue for the Dracosian. I think it's Lath Cannons or a uh, Battle Cannon, Demolisher Cannon, something like that. So that's cool. Again, a little ditty frame because a lot of these tanks is going to be a kind of base chassis and then that will build into other variants. I don't know if that is the same chassis as the Malkador, maybe. Could well be. Um, we get two vehicle upgrade frames as well, like with the Space Marines. We've got universal upgrade frames, which will be used on all of their vehicles. They have like your crew and pintle mounted weapons as well, and the dozer blade. 
So that's really cool. And again, a lot of this, while it's not getting 40k rules, you could probably count as in a 40k army if you wanted to, um, you know, use the transport as a chimera maybe. And you don't get any sponsons in here, but I'm sure you could use the, the fancy Lehman Russ as a standard one. So that's cool. We'll put them to one side. This looks like it is the Lehman Russ frame. And you normally do say on it, that is the Lehman Ross. And then we've got the weapon sprue on it too. That must be the chassis of the Lehman Ross here maybe. Yeah, maybe that's the Ross. But yeah, these, these tanks look so cool. Again, I've built the resin um, Mars pattern Lehman Ross, and that's a really nice kit, but obviously it's uh, part resin, part plastic. So being able to build this fully in plastic is, is really, really good. And again, we get two weapon options on here. They are releasing a separate kit with the other weapon options. And then we get a rejigged uh, sprue here for the um, kind of sides of it. Again, that looks really nice. And then we get two sprues in here for the transport. And these are these are big chunky sprues for this. That is a nice big kit. So this must be like the chassis of it. And again, where the tanks have got like multiple different models, they've split them down into like the, the hull and the tracks and stuff so they can reuse them. So that's cool. And then this big old sprue here, we've got the tracks and everything on. Again, that's really cool. I am very much looking forward to seeing this um, built up and seeing what other tanks that we get for the Solar Exodia. Obviously we know we're getting Malkadors and I think they use the same chassis as this. So I suspect we'll see this sprue plus another sprue then to make the Malkador. But yeah, it's a big old tank when it's built. Uh, we get bases for all the models there, just 25 mil bases and a 50, 60 mil base, maybe a 60 mil base for the Sentinel. And then we also get a load of transfers as well. So we get some little infantry ones for putting on your guys and it looks like we also get a um, vehicle transfer sheet too so that's pretty cool before we jump ahead though what we're going to do is just have a quick look through the instructions see what kind of options we've got on the kits and um, have a look at the rules for the new sentinel too so again, this is one way you're probably going to want to work out what you're building because um, obviously there's a lot of options on these vehicles. I believe a lot of this is going to be changeable, but certainly on the troops, you probably want to have a good read of your, um, your kind of army list first and see how you want to have things set up because they look like they're quite detailed kits. Loads of stuff on there. But yeah, they look... They look really cool. So yeah, look at the last rifle section and the command section. Both use the same core bodies, then have additional stuff that goes on them. So that's quite a nice way of doing it. It um, again, it means that they can save the sprues across the uh, the various bits of the army, which is nice. Uh, Lehman Ross strike tank looks like it builds much like any Lehman Ross. We've got the nice little kind of trench rails on the back of it. And let's see what the weapon options are like. So you do put the, the kind of turret weapon in as you're building it. You might be able to magnetize that. I think I'm just gonna build it as is. But it looks like all of the kind of like secondary weapons here just plug into there. So I reckon with a small magnet or a pin or maybe even a bit of blue tack, you should be able to swap between those weapons, which is really cool. Um, yeah, I like that. That's pretty good. And then we've got the upgrades from the um, kind of transport, uh, the vehicle upgrade sprue. Again, we've got crew member, we've got sponsor weapons, all the kind of stuff that we've seen in the Astartes tanks. 
And then again, we've got some other options to go on there. I do like the dozer blade on it, I think that looks good. Yeah, now they look cool. So that's the Lehman Ross. And then the Dracosan Armoured Transport. Again, that's going to be a big old tank when it's built together. And I believe this one's probably going to be quite swappable with the weapons too, given how they come on their own sprue. So we build up the tank there. We then build like the transport part. And then, yeah, if you see how these go together, it doesn't look like there's any shared parts between the two weapon options. So again, you should be able to just blue tack the primary weapon onto it. So that's really, really good. Uh, so there's no kind of secondary weapon on here. And then we've just got the uh, the Sponson as well. Uh, the pinnacle mounted weapon, sorry. Uh, option of hunter killer missiles. Yeah, that all looks like it goes together fairly uh, easily. So that's cool. Uh, and then finally the heavy sentinel. Again, we get a load of weapon options on here. Now hopefully these are swappable too. I suspect they will be by the fact that we build them in whole. So yeah, it looks like they might just kind of peg into the top of it. And the same with the, the weapon options on the side. So Horus obviously kids are pretty good at this by giving you all the different weapon options and having them swappable. Um, so that's, that's really cool. You don't have to commit to like what loadout you're giving your vehicle between games. Yeah, I like that. So before we jump on to the future and see kind of what they look like in the flesh, we do have the full rules for the Aethon Heavy Sentinel here. So they're 70 points each. You can take two additional ones at 65 points each again. I'm thinking of probably picking up another two of these boxes because that then gives me enough troops to build like the bulk of my army. And then I've got a unit of three land raiders, uh, Lehman Rosses, a unit of three Sentinels. I've got transports for everything. I think that's a pretty good start then for your Solar Auxiliary Army. Uh, it looks pretty good. Movement 7, Weapon Skill and Ballistic Skill 3, which is, you know, average, but it is only Solar Auxiliary. Strength and Toughness 6, 5 Wounds, 2 plus Save. So, it doesn't have any, like, um, you know, invulnerable save or anything. But 2 plus Save is pretty hardy. Toughness 6 as well, it's going to be kind of pretty tough to take down with, you know, bolters and the like. Um, it comes with the multi-laser and it comes with the missile batteries, which are 30 inch range, strength 4, AP 5. Assault 1, large blast, barrage and twin linked. Uh, and you can swap out the multi-laser for an also cannon or grenade hardness, a last cannon, heavy incinerator, which is a template strength 6, torrent 6 inches, AP 4, or the melter lance, which is 18 inches, strength 8, AP 1, heavy armor bane. That's pretty nice if you want to go hunting tanks in a unit of them. Uh, and you can replace the side missile batteries with four hunter killer missiles as well. So again, if you wanted to double down into that kind of like tank killer rule for it you can load it up with um with the missile so that's pretty cool and it is a mechanized unit as well so mechanized means that successful wounds caused with poison or flesh bane must be re-rolled uh fail to wound rolls made for weapons with armor bane uh must be re-rolled okay so that's interesting they're more likely to get wounded by armor bane uh, a model with a mechanised unit subtype can attack with all weapons making a shooting attack including as a reaction. Uh, mechanised may attack with heavy and ordnance and counter stationary and declare charges as normal regardless of shooting. Uh, a model with a mechanised unit subtype is affected by haywire, detonation and battlesmith as if it was a dreadnought. And no model that doesn't have the mechanised unit subtype can join them. So they seem pretty cool for 70 points. Um, yeah, again, interesting to see if we get an upgraded kind of supplement or something that gives us these new units that we're getting outside of these, these rules as well. So what we're going to do now is jump to the future, where hopefully I've got this built, it'll be built, and hopefully even painted, and we'll do some size comparisons to some other tanks in the range and space marines and kind of see how they stack up, so see you in a second. So jumping into the future and I've been busy building and painting some solar auxilia. So yeah, really, really cool box. And I think a lot of people are going to be jumping on this um, to make, you know, either an allied contingent for their Horus Heresy army or start a brand new army because it's always been really difficult to do a solar auxilia force with the models being so expensive in resin. Um, with the plastics 
in here being you know a lot easier to work with and a lot more accessible hopefully we'll see a lot more solar auxilia you know armies on the battlefield now not gonna lie they're still going to be a cheap force because you're probably going to want you know multiples of these boxes to build the core of your army and then obviously add some other bits to it um but yeah let's have a look at the kit so the first one that we'll look at is the heavy sentinel and this is quite a nice kit in that all the weapon options are fully kind of modular so you've got the choice of five different weapons that are just fixed on a pin on the top of the tank. So if we switch out for the, the melter weapon maybe, they just sit on and they stay on there with resistance. So yeah, that's a really, really good design because it means that um, you don't even need to stick a magnet on there. Just paint all them separately and you can swap them all out. Um, the side weapons as well are also modular. Now for those ones you do need magnets. There's a, I think it's a three inch magnet hole. I put in two inch magnets and they worked. Um, but that allows you to swap between the rockets and the missile pods. And if you look, there's actually two different locations where they can clip in as well. So you can have them facing like forward or facing up into the air. So yeah, that's a really, really nice touch. Um, obviously fitting magnets on them was a little bit fiddly um, more so than just being able to swap out the top weapon on them but I think it is well worth doing because it gives you a lot more options now these are getting painted up as Chthonian headhunters I've not got that far on them yet unfortunately I'm planning on doing a big painting session on these over the next few weeks so we'll have the kind of fully painted images up on the uh, the website as well when they're done but uh, yeah, really like the Heavy Sentinel. Um, like I say, the rules for this are included in the box, but I believe they are going to be included in the upcoming supplement book as well. So, you know, if you are a Horus Heresy fan and a particular player of the Solar Auxilia, you're probably going to want to pick up that box as well. So let's move that to one side and the weapons. Now, one thing that's been mentioned on Warcom and isn't actually featured on the box, but you can actually build a marshal. Um, out of the box, I know I mentioned during the review that um, there's a couple of HQ options and, and you can only build one of them from this box. That's not actually true. And a lot of people have been asking, like, is it the kind of the, the, the leader of the command squad that you sub out? Again, no, there's enough parts to build the marshal in addition to the, the command squad. So that's really cool. You need to um, kind of fudge around some pieces elsewhere and you get enough sprues and parts within the, the kit to have enough, you know, unique chest plates and helmets and stuff so that the kind of, the leader of the command squad looks different than the other guys. But that leaves you with enough parts then to go to town with your marshal. You get a load of weapon options for him too. Um, so that's really, really good. And I'm surprised that it's not like advertised on the box because um, that's a big deal getting a, you know, your HQ in there too. Because I thought this would be something you have to purchase in addition if you wanted to run this as a true force. So yeah, really, really nice that it builds them. While we're looking at them, we'll have a quick look at the uh, the plastics for the command squad. And yeah, they, they look really nice. Now I've not, unfortunately not got any of the resin ones to use as comparison to these, but they are very, very nice. They use the same kind of like core frame as the infantry. And then obviously you've got the additional sprue with like the command options on there. So I suspect, that one thing that I will say about these, rules wise, you've got options of giving them kind of some special weapons. Um, you don't actually include get those included on the sprue, so I suspect we'll see something like the Astartes where they'll sell a separate box. Maybe when the um, Storm section come out, I I'm not sure what they're equipped with, but if they're just equipped with the Volkites, you might get a box that comes out with the kind of the rotor cannons and the, the various weapon options for these guys, and there should be some spares then. So um, if you are picking up multiple boxes of these, um, like I probably will be in order to uh, build up the army. If you keep aside one of these frames, then you can build a second one tooled out or use them as companions or something. But yeah, these are very, very nice models. And um, yeah, they're going to be really fun to paint up. Obviously, Cthulhu Headhunters, so I've sprayed them grey and I've kind of airbrushed them a slightly lighter grey. And then we'll be going in with the metals and the distinctive red 
kind of accents on them. So obviously I want these to be fairly quick to paint because there's going to be a lot of guys in my force. You're probably talking a couple of couple of 20 man infantry squads and then you know the various command for them so there are going to be a lot of bodies to get through and if we look at the basic infantry again much like the um, Astartes these are built on five different poses and then the arms kind of get paired to them I'd say they're a little bit fiddlier to build than the Space Marines they took me ironically longer to build these than it would a squad of Space Marines I'm um, obviously trying to get them looking nice for the for the website and everything, but um, I think once you've done you know ten of them, the rest of them should be fairly quick because again you're building them in lots of five. Um, so if we just grab the kind of squad leader, he's just got a slightly different chest plate and a slightly different helmet that makes him look a bit distinct to the others. And then we've got the banner bearer as well. Again, he looks really really cool. And then you've got your comms guy. Again, just has an alternate piece. So most of these are just built from those same stock five poses though, which is a really good way of doing them, like they have with the Space Marines. So really cool, can't wait to get some paint on those. The thing that excites me the most though, are the tanks. So let's have a look at the Lehman Russ first. Now I have got, somewhere to hand, a Mars Alpha pattern Lehman Russ, which is the resin model that this was based on, originally released for the Death Corps of Krieg, and then the same basic like tank chassis has been used for the Solar Auxilia ones. And um, again, really, really nice representation of it. So if you have a quick look at the plastic one first. Obviously we've got those trench rails at the back and the slightly different kind of engine loadout and a more kind of like ornate design to it. So there's a lot of kind of gold trim and stuff that's gonna go on here. The weapons, again, I've just blue tacked it in. You get all the weapon options and you can swap those out as needed, which is really handy. You could make the main weapon switchable, but it was a bit too much of a faff for me and I'm gonna buy multiples of these anyway. So I built this one as my kind of like squadron commander. And then, you know, the next one I might build as a Vanquisher or something, maybe. So if we look at the original resin one, you see the Death Core one's kind of got that um, dust filter on the back of it. But a lot of the detail in the railing is, is pretty much spot on. Obviously there are, there are some differences. The design of the hatches is a little bit different. And the kind of the front of it is a little bit different. But on the whole, I think it's a really good representation of the, the resin tank. So very, very impressed with that. So going to be adding more of these to the army. There is going to be the uh, demolisher variation as well with all the different weapon options that's got. And then the other big kit that you get in the box is the Dracosan as well, the armoured transport. This is a very nice and very big tank as well. If we get a land raider, which I'll just grab off camera. So if you look at the size of it, obviously the Land Raider is a lot kind of wider than it, but it's actually a longer tank. It's um, quite an impressive size. It you know dwarfs over a, a rhino, or even if we get the um, the Lehman Rust back, it stands considerably bigger than the uh, the Rust, which is again really really cool to see. So I haven't got a resin one of these to show off. Um, essentially it is uh, the chassis that's going to be used for the Malkador, so that's another tank that's going to be coming on the way soon. We've got those same kind of like nice trench rails on the back and a very kind of heavily armoured shell to it. The main gun again, I've built this so it's removable, you can swap it out for the demolisher cannon. So uh, I'm torn, I'm probably going to do the siege regiment, siege cohort, which is the artillery specialists. It allows them to take artillery kind of units and tanks as elite's choice as well as heavy, allowing you to really kind of fit loads of that stuff in. But every unit in your army has to have a transport. So I'll probably use these with last cannons to transport my 20 man squads and then give them demolisher cannons to transport my kind of command squads and storm sections and stuff like that. Again, started working on this one, uh, kind of the, the classic um, grey, red and gold scheme. And then we'll be weathering this up to make sure it looks like it's been through the wars. But yeah, very, very nice tank and was really fun to work on. I'm looking forward to the Malkador coming out because obviously that's a, 
a kind of battle tank built off the same chassis and I'll probably be trying to squeeze as many of them into my army as I can because they look really really cool so yeah all in all a really really nice box if you are thinking of starting a solar auxiliary army um, I do think it's probably worth picking up two of these boxes that will then give you enough you know bodies to do a couple of 20-man squads you've got a kind of command squad that can go above that and then your HQ units plus transports and tanks and, and the two sentinels that will give you a good foundation of a force but, you know, you could pick up this box and just use it as a self-contained allied army. Um, give the Dracosan to your HQ squad and then have two, you know, 10-man squads or 120-man squad. It'd be a nice little palette cleanser to allow you to paint up something different for the Solo Auxilia, which I think is really, really fun. And I suspect a lot of people might be doing that because... Um, Oh, they're cool aren't they so yeah that was a look at them hopefully we've got more kits from them coming soon obviously they've got quite a large range um we know that a lot of kits have disappeared from the forge world site as well so presumably they're all going to get the the plastic treatment um i'm hoping that they're not too far behind this release because i suspect once people have kind of got the the solar auxilia bug they'll want to build and paint some more and i'll probably be trying to pick up another box of these and a few of the um you know the separate kits when they're out and doing a slow burn solar auxilia army i think that'd be really fun but yeah so let's look at the solar rocks uh, we have got a companion piece over on spruceandbrews.com where we kind of we've got some more pictures of these pictures of the sprues i'll go into a bit more detail and what you get in the kit and how they were to build um, so check that out if you are interested if you've enjoyed the video as well why not give us a follow we do lots of kind of unboxings and battle reports and videos like this so if you have enjoyed stick around because uh we love doing the content and sharing it with you guys. Uh, if you would like to support the site as well, we have got a affiliate link to Element Games in the description. If you use that, we get a bit of a kickback, which goes towards helping pay for all the kind of site hosting and all that stuff. But yeah, let us know if you're looking forward to building and painting some sort of auxilia. Tell us what force you're going to go for. And yeah, if you're going to add these to your Horus Heresy army. But until next time, have a great weekend and we'll see you soon.